Before we discuss various examples from this topic of search and indices, let's understand a very important technique which is known as rationalization. Rationalization is the process of eliminating the search from the denominator of a fraction. There are wider extensions to this technique of rationalization where it can also be used to eliminate imaginary numbers from a complex number. But since our discussion is limited to certs, we'll focus only on how to eliminate the certs from the denominator of a fraction so that the simplification becomes easy. And we shall do this with the help of a few examples. So as I've mentioned, in general, rationalization is a technique where we eliminate certs from the denominator of a fraction. All right, let's take a few examples to understand this. Let's say we have a number 3 upon root 2 right this is a number right 3 by root 2 or a fraction where the numerator is 3 but the denominator has got a third root 2 all right now if you have to simplify this ideally we should eliminate the third or the root term in the denominator so how do we do this now fundamentally here we multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction with a common term such that the third in the denominator gets eliminated. Now here we understand that a square root can be eliminated by squaring the term. Right? For example, if root 2 is multiplied by another root 2, then it becomes root 2 the whole square. And this square root with the whole square gets cancelled out. So we will have only 2 in the denominator. So the idea here is to multiply the denominator with root 2. But since this is a fraction, we need to do a similar application in the numerator as well. That is multiply both the numerator and the denominator with the value root 2 or with the third root 2, which does not affect the fraction. So here we try to rationalize this using root 2 in both numerator and denominator. So if you look at it, the fraction has not been changed, right? We are multiplying and dividing by a common value. Now, if you simplify this, it becomes 3 root 2, 3 into root 2, 3 root 2 divided by root 2, the whole square. Now, we know that root 2 and the square gets eliminated. Root 2 into root 2 is equal to 2. So, the value now will become 3 by 2 root 2 or 3 root 2 by 2. So, now if you observe, the fraction 3 by root 2 has been simplified as 3 by 2 into root 2 or 3 root 2 by 2. So this is the idea behind rationalization. We multiply both the numerator and denominator of, of the given fraction with a common uh, term or with a common value such that the third in the denominator has to get eliminated. Right? Likewise, let's say if we have root 3 in the denominator, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by root 3. So root 3 into root 3 becomes 3. Or if it is root 6, root 6 into root 6 will give us 6. So that's the idea. Now, how about higher uh, thirds, higher degree thirds? For example, this is a square root, but what if we have a cubed root or a fifth root in the denominator? Let's take an example to uh, understand that as well. Let's say we have 5 divided by cubed root of uh, 4. 5 divided by cubed root of 4. Now, this has to be simplified. We have a third in the denominator, which is cubed root of 4, a simple third. But then this has to be eliminated, right? We need to eliminate this cubed root in the denominator. Earlier we had eliminated the square root. Now we are going to eliminate the cubed root. Now what do we do? See, from the laws of thirds and the laws of indices that we have discussed earlier, we know that the nth root of a power n is equal to a, right? The nth root of a power n is equal to a, right? Here we have cubed root of 4. Now if we can get 4 cubed, this cubed root and that cube gets eliminated, right? nth root of a power n is equal to a. So basically that nth root and power n, the index n both gets cancelled out and we are left with only the uh, real number a. So how do we eliminate this cubed root now? We should have a cube. Now here we only have a 4. So what do we have to do? Multiply with 4 squared, right? Multiply with 4 squared. So if you get 4 squared inside this, this 4 cube and the cube root gets eliminated. But then it's not just simply multiplication with 4 square. It should be multiplication of cube root of 4 square. Right? Only then that 4 square can go inside this cube root. So what do we do? Multiply with cube root of 4 square. And this also gets cube root of 4 square. So this now becomes 5 into cube root of 4 square or it can be taken as uh, 16, cube root of 16 divided by, now if you look at it, applying the laws of thirds, cube root of 4 into cube root of 4 square, right? The nth root of 
a into n root of b becomes n root of a into b. So this can be taken as cube root of 4 into 4 square. 4 into 4 square. So how do we simplify this? This becomes 5 into cube root of 4 square is 16 divided by cube root of 4 cube. Now we don't have to write all those intermediate steps. We simply understand that the nth root and power n gets cancelled out. Cube root and cube gets eliminated. So we are left with 5 cube root of 16 divided by 4. So as you see, the third cube root of 4 in the denominator has been eliminated. We are left with only 4 in the denominator. So this is how we simply multiply both numerator and denominator of a fraction with the rationalizing factor, right? The term that we multiply with is known as the rationalizing factor. So we multiply with the right rationalizing factor in order to eliminate the third in the denominator. In the previous two examples, we have seen how to eliminate the thirds in the denominator of a fraction. But there, there was only one third in the denominator, right? In the first example, it was root 2. And the second example, it was cube root of 4. But let us now understand how to deal with multiple thirds available in the denominator of a fraction. For example, let's look at this fraction here, 6 upon root 5 plus root 3. So here as you see, we have got a combination of thirds in the denominator. So how do we eliminate them and simplify the expression? Well, the method remains the same. Multiply both the numerator and the denominator with the rationalizing factor of root 5 plus root 3. But the question that arises is, how do we get the rationalizing factor of this expression root 5 plus root 3? The point here to be noted is that the rationalizing factor of an expression which has got two thirds or one third uh, which is along with a real number is nothing but the conjugate of the given expression. Now what is a conjugate or how do we obtain a conjugate? A conjugate is simply obtained by negating the second term of the given binomial expression. For example here root 5 plus root 3 the rationalizing factor for this would be the conjugate of root 5 plus root 3 which is nothing but root 5 minus root 3. Let's see how it works. So when we multiply both numerator and denominator with root 5 minus root 3, we can see that the thirds in the denominator gets eliminated, right? So if you observe, we have simply taken the negative of the second term, right? We are negating the second term. If it is plus, take it as minus. If it is minus here, then we take it as plus in the rationalizing factor, right? So if you observe root 5 plus root 3, the rationalizing factor is root 5 minus root 3. Now let's simplify this and see how it works. So we have 6 into root 5 minus root 3. Now if you look at the two denominators, one is root 5 plus root 3 and the other one is root 5 minus root 3, which is in the form of a plus b into a minus b. And we very well know that a plus b into a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. So what should come in the denominator here? a squared minus b squared. The term a in our case is root 5. So root 5 squared minus b squared. What is b? Root 3. Root 3 squared. Now root 5 squared is equal to 5. Root 3 squared is equal to 3. So 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Right? So this can be taken as 6 into root 5 minus root 3 divided by 5 minus 3, 2. And 2 can be cancelled 3 times here. So this will be equal to 3 into root 5 minus root 3 or it can be taken as 3 root 5 minus 3 root 3. So if you see the fraction 6 divided by root 5 plus root 3 has become 3 into root 5 minus root 3 which is much simpler when compared to the original fraction. Right? So we have simply taken the conjugate of the expression root 5 plus root 3. A conjugate is nothing but it is obtained by negating the second term. Right? And what's the idea here? The expression a plus b into a minus b equals to a square minus b square. So if you observe, a plus b and a minus b are the factors for a square minus b square. And these two are the conjugates of each other. Right? The conjugate for a plus b is a minus b. The conjugate for a minus b is a plus b. Alright? So if we have plus, we need to take minus as the conjugate. And if you have minus, then we need to take plus as the conjugate. A similar method is also used for eliminating uh, imaginary numbers in complex terms. There we use complex conjugate. For example, a plus of ib, right, where i is denoting imaginary, a plus of ib, the conjugate or the complex conjugate is a minus ib. But however, since this is uh, not a part of our discussion, let's focus only on search. Alright, let's take a few more examples here. Let's say we have, uh, you know, 14 upon root 7 plus 
थ्री और फोर्टीन अपॉन रूट सेवन माइनस थ्री सो हाउ डू वी एलिमिनेट रूट सेवन इन द डिनोमीटर वॉट डू वी डू सिंपली टेक द कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ दिस एक्सप्रेशन राइट द रूट सेवन माइनस थ्री द कॉन्जुगेट विल बी रूट सेवन प्लस थ्री सो मल्टीप्लाई बोथ न्यूमीटर एंड डिनोमीटर विथ रूट सेवन प्लस थ्री So the numerator becomes 14 into root 7 plus 3 upon now the denominator a minus b into a plus b should be a square minus b square. What is a square? Root 7 square. What is root 7 square? 7 minus b square. B square is nothing but 3 square in our case. What is 3 square? 9. So what do we get here? 7 minus 9 equals to minus 2, right? So if you simplify, this minus 2 gets cancelled minus 7 times. All right, we have a negative sign, 14 by 2, which is 7. So minus 7, minus 7 into root 7 plus 3 is the simplified value of 14 by root 7 minus root 3. So that's how we can use the conjugate of the denominators in order to eliminate multiple thirds or a combination of a third with a real number. If you look at this case, we have only one third combined with another real number. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a wide extension to this uh, rationalization process, right? We may have cubed roots uh, in the denominator, right? Or we may have fourth roots in the denominator. There again, accordingly, the rationalizing factor would change. But since uh, the type of questions that we face in the most of the competitive exams are based on simple thirds and simple binomial expressions, let's not focus on uh, the wider extensions of rationalization. So from our discussion of rationalization and the examples that we have taken up it is clear about what the rationalizing factors are for different fractions right in general for a fraction which is 1 by root a the rationalizing factor is root a which is nothing but the third in the denominator right so uh, when we have to eliminate the third in the denominator of 1 by root a what do we do both multiply and divide by root a that is the rationalizing factor likewise for 1 by root a plus or minus b the rationalizing factor is root a minus or plus b right the idea behind this is a plus b into a minus b is a squared minus b squared or x plus y into x minus y is x squared minus y squared so we simply have to take the negation of the second term right if it is plus b we take minus b if it is minus b here we take plus b to obtain the rationalizing factor so simply multiply this fraction with root a minus or plus b and divide by root a minus or plus b and by using which we can eliminate the thirds in the denominator and the last one here is 1 by root a plus or minus root b here we have two thirds right root a and root b the rationalizing factor for this fraction is root a minus or plus root b right the reason here remains the same when it is plus take minus if it is minus take it as plus because x plus y into x minus y will result in x square minus y square and by squaring these terms we can eliminate the thirds easily all right so that's about uh, the rationalizing factors uh, which can help us in eliminating the thirds in the denominator let us now move ahead and look at some of the examples from this topic of thirds and indices